What happens at Sandia National Laboratory's High Performance Computing Complex? World changing stuff, like figuring out how to shoot down a dying satellite before it crashed into Earth. Or figuring out what an asteroid impact would look like. Or how disease might spread. Understanding climate change and natural disasters. All these challenging projects are done by some of the world's fastest computers. Oh, and the people who work with them. High performance computing systems, or supercomputers, are huge. They take up big box store size rooms, use the equivalent of Olympic swimming pools of water to cool them, and it takes hundreds of miles of cable to connect them. What's really surprising is that the components inside supercomputers are the same components used in personal computers, except on the scale of tens of thousands of them. But tens of thousands of processors don't make a supercomputer any more than a corral full of horses makes a team. <laughs> Getting the processors to work together requires connecting them together in a network. That way, the power of the individual processors are multiplied to deliver the collective power necessary to take on massive computing tasks. When a group of computers are linked together, it's called a cluster. Once they are networked together, they can perform a mind-boggling trillions of calculations per second. Trillions! In the time it takes a bullet to travel one foot, the Red Storm supercomputer can perform about 100 billion calculations. While the processors in home computers and laptops run things like web browsers and games, the processors in supercomputers are used for modeling, simulation, and visualization. Basically, that's the recreation of events in the real world, in the virtual world. A computer model can be compared to a model of a car, or an airplane, or even Legos. It is a collection of small pieces that are assembled into a larger whole. Except, in the supercomputer, once the model is assembled, it can be changed in many different ways, at lightning speed. Computer modeling and simulation essentially allow scientists to bend time, slow down events, speed them up, or try lots of different what-if scenarios. Take, for instance, the modeling and simulation that was used in shooting down the dying satellite. The Red Storm supercomputer could put together all the pieces of the puzzle that scientists had to figure out. Like the rotation of the Earth, the speed of the satellite as it fell toward Earth, and the speed of the missile launched off a ship in rough seas. Because everything had to come together perfectly, scientists could change the model to speed up the rocket or change the position of the ship to calculate exactly what had to happen for the rocket to hit the satellite. Yeah, it is actually rocket science. Fire. This is rocket science. <laughs> Modeling and simulation can be applied to living things too, like plants. The National Renewable Energy Laboratory uses a special cluster of the Red Sky supercomputer to model corn plants at the molecular level to understand how to convert the waste part, like stalks and leaves, into biofuel to power vehicles. Because modeling and simulation runs generate such huge amounts of data, supercomputers require massive amounts of storage. In fact, just storing the data is so complex and the storage devices are so huge, they have special programs on board to coordinate the data going in. Amazing as they are, supercomputers wouldn't be any more useful than a dead refrigerator without the many talented, dedicated people who work at Sandia's High Performance Computing Center. Of course there are scientists and engineers and mathematicians, the kind of careers that you would expect in a scientific environment, but they are just part of the multi-talented team it takes to accomplish important projects in the national interest. The High Performance Computing Center also needs the skills of people in trades, like electricians and plumbers. Then, there are support personnel, people in accounting, administration, and maintenance. Even artists, video production specialists, and writers. 
how'd he get in there? Many career paths lead to the High Performance Computing Center. However, because of the required skill level, the security and national interest type projects, Sandy only hires the most qualified people. The same goes for student interns who get to work on fascinating projects with cool equipment. Plus, there's the whole working in the national interest thing. So if you think you might want to be part of the High Performance Computing Center team, take your education seriously, stay out of trouble, engage in the world around you, and develop curiosity. For more information on Sandia internships, check us out online.